And yeah. I'm all for goals. It's a great, but that, that eight week sprint of clean eating and exercise, what happens after the wedding? Unless you've actually adopted that goal as a value set and say, I now value clean eating, quality nutrition, regular exercise, the way it contributes to my happiness and my well-being in life. Until you've adopted that as a value, then you're still needing support, you still need the accountability, and you still need goals along the way to help you get there. But the ultimate goal is to really adopt it as part of your lifestyle. So the science is all about taking balanced quality recommendations, but actually the implementation of them. That's the whole trick. And if you can implement them well, that person's going to see progress. It doesn't need to be any extreme strategy. Welcome to the Heart Healthy Hustle Show. Let's get after it. What are you fighting for? What are you getting after? What seeds are you planting? What are you overcoming? Think big. Think even bigger. Take some risks. God's got your back. Go for it. Don't hold back. Don't ever have regrets in your life. Go fail. Go grow from those things. Live your life. Your identity is not defined by your successes or your failures. If you're not happy where you're at, you won't be happy where you're going. Choose to do the things that will make you the person you want to be, that will make you a better person next week and next year. You're going to have to leave some things you're actually good at behind so that you can find what you're wired for, what you're born for. Being a world-class entrepreneur is being in every area of life excellent. It is the little things that are so easy not to do The best thing that you can do is assume the best in people. I want people around the world to believe they can do something great with their life. If I build the biggest business, but I destroy my physical body and I lose my health, I don't think that's success. While you're on the journey climbing to success, never forget the things that matter most. If you like this episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Welcome back to another inspiring episode of the Heart Healthy Hustle Show. We're here with Angelo Poli. Angelo, welcome. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. I've been looking forward to getting to visit with you. And I just got finished doing some interesting exercises that I learned from your TED Talk in uh, TEDx Chico, California. Give the listeners a background on you and what you're into. Well, MetPro is short for metabolic profiling, and that, that's the name of, uh, of our company and the process that we've put in place to provide concierge coaching for individuals who really want to learn. We work with people where, where it kind of came from is years ago, I started as a fitness expert, started as a personal trainer, and uh, I got injured. And so that's that kind of snowballed. And so I, I actually walked with a cane for 10 years dealing with that injury. Um, and I didn't want to leave my industry. So I ended up specializing in uh, metabolism and transformations and the strategy that goes into a very, very specific start to finish. We'll definitely want to get into your story. We usually start out the show with a favorite success quote or a saying you live by. So share with us what you got. Oh, progress. Humans are motivated uh, most by seeing progress. I'm interested to hear a story of how you started MetPro and the trials you had to overcome. How'd you go from a guy with chronic injuries to being featured in the Huffington Post and giving TED Talks, now working with high-level executives? So if you would go into that story for us, we're very curious to hear. I was just traveling around, giving seminars and educating on metabolism and, and transformations as a way to stay in the game. Because at that point, I I couldn't. Uh, so are you doc- hand people are you, dumbbells? Are you doctor, personal trainer? What's your background? I'm a personal trainer. That's what I did for a number of years. I just wasn't a very good one at first. (laughs) I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn that there's so much information out there. How do you cut through what actually works and and what isn't? So I I do have one story that I I love. One of my very first uh, clients that really got me started on this journey, she was working out at a a gym. She was uh, in her 60s, early 60s, and she saw me in the gym and she actually approached me and said, Hey, I was wondering, I, I want to start getting in better shape. And you look like you, you knew what you were doing with the, with the exercise machines and the dumbbells. Would you help me lose a few pounds and get fit? 
I said, yeah, it'd be my pleasure. And uh, that was that was actually my first client that I ever took. And she got in shape. She quit smoking. She ended up marrying her high school sweetheart. She lost 60 pounds. It was just like right out of a, a book. And it inspired me. Mm. And so I said, you know what? I want to do this for life. And so she said to me, she goes, well, I have a, a, a friend that I'd like you to work with. And she's younger than I am. I did the exact same thing with her friend and her friend lost five pounds. So (laughs) she lost 60, her friend lost five. I learned the most valuable lesson and that is everyone's body responds different. And that's what kind of sent me on my journey of research and study to try and figure out why and how the metabolism plays a part in all of that. And that's what eventually snowballed into neuromuscular re-education, posture and alignment, specific exercise training, working with some pro athletes, and then working with executives, which is where my company specializes today. Doing a lot of research on you, and I found that you shared how you know, there is so much information out there and it's hard to knock anyone's program because they all work, but not for every person, right? That's right. Yes. Uh, I, so a, a week doesn't go by that someone doesn't call me and say, well, you know, what about this exercise or what about that style of diet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have seen every strategy work. It's just not every strategy works for the same person and on under the same circumstances. So what people need is to figure out how to measure the response their body is giving to a certain strategy mm. and then weigh its value against their personal response. And the illustration I use is like going to a car mechanic and walking into the garage and asking the mechanic is like, well, you know, I was wondering, I see all the tools you got out here. Which, which one's the best tool, uh, the screwdriver or the wrench? Because I hear really good things about the screwdriver this time of year. It's a silly question. It's it's all about having the right tool for the job. Um, instead of asking the question, what's the best diet, for example, ask the question, how is my body responding to this strategy? And then put together a cohesive hmm. progression of what's next. So what I hope to accomplish with this interview, Angelo, is to give the audience insight and obviously no one size fits all program or anything, but give them some insight into the importance of neuro working on metabolism and how that's unique to each and every individual person and then how we can implement MetPro to help facilitate that. I went to college for exercise science, um, so very similar with training. I did some pole vaulting, uh, had some injuries. Oh, wow. Just kind of, you know, all these like imbalances. And so for the past three to five years, I've been hyper intentional about comprehensive health, holistic health, postural health. I really, no pun intended, but align with a lot of stuff that I've researched about you and MetPro. Um, oh, right on. Can, can you give us a bit of a more background and detail of your past with using a cane for many years, uh, your multiple surgeries? So I was 22, 23 Um, And it was a scenario where I just ignored uh, the warning signals my body was was sending out and uh, ended up with some crippling back pain. And as anybody who's ever experienced a a back injury that's chronic can attest uh, there's it's a different kind of pain and it's a different kind of debilitation because you can't escape it. You can't compartmentalize. You can't move it away from your body. It, you feel it when you breathe. You feel it when you walk. You feel it when you strain. Um, so uh, that became really the uh, a focus of my life was trying to figure out how to get healthy and well, both uh, naturally and going the exercise and posture and alignment and muscle balance route, but also um, from the medical approach as well. And uh, over the course of many, many different procedures and even a fairly major surgery, uh, I'm I'm finally back to uh, can do my deadlifts and my squats and my bench press. Actually, as a little bit of a personal victory, uh, one, about a year and a half to two years after I got rid of my cane, 
I was able to do just a local level, amateurs level uh, powerlifting competition as just a personal goal that I had always had. And uh, it felt really good to be able to participate in that and have have a little bit of my life back. But the real story was the experience and the journey that I had along the way. If you would have asked me uh, 15 years ago, well, what are you going to do with your life? There's no way I would have said, well, I think I'm going to, you know, um, sit behind a computer and coach um, executives and uh, and entrepreneurs in the science of body transformation, health, and wellness. Never thought that would be the case. Yet, uh, that's what that's what I find that we're we're doing day in and day out these days, and it's a blast. I'd love to do this, not only focusing on that area of expertise, but also the entrepreneurial side of it, the business side of it. How you took those expertise, knowledge, and personal experience, and plugged it into entrepreneurship, how you got connected with people like JLD, John Lee Dumas. He's a big fan of MetPro. And for the listeners, you know JLD. We just had him on the show last week. He's got a large audience. And even just him being a client alone speaks volumes for your company. Um, Good guy. Yeah. How would you say that transition went from not really understanding where all this was going to go? You know, you finally got some of your health back and you want to share all this information uh, but you still didn't know what you would end up doing long term. I had a couple uh, small private training facilities in California. So, uh, were and they like storefronts that you opened? Yeah, yeah. We had, uh, it, it was just, you know, a typical personal training private studio um, that we started with and a little bit at a time started growing. And what would happen is I got more and more requests for remote coaching. I had some great trainers that joined the team and that were instrumental in the early days, but more and more people were coming to us uh, with pretty significant body transformations and lifestyle transformations and saying, you know, I got a cousin here or a friend there um, that lives out of the area, but what they really need is they have a personal trainer, they have a gym membership, they're exercising, they eat clean, but what they need help with is the strategy for their body because they've tried this and that and it hasn't really stuck. It didn't really work. What do they need to do? We found that we were working with more clients remotely and on a more, I want to even say a more intimate level than what we were doing when someone would come in and, and exercise with us for an hour. It enabled us to communicate more frequently, track more metrics and be more involved with the other 23 hours of the day when they weren't necessarily in the gym. That really started to snowball. Fortunately, we, we were able to develop good word of mouth and we started getting some heavier hitters. So initially we worked with a lot of people in the physique sports, bodybuilding, figure, physique, and then that transitioned into the pro sports world. And I had the privilege of working with top athletes across multiple sports. And then from there, it kind of snowballed into, you know, Johnny's not a pro football player. He He's an executive or, you know, he's a professional, but he really wants to have more energy. He'd like to lose that, that last 10, 15 pounds and be healthier, see ble- better blood work. And so we really had to pivot the way we were approaching uh, our coaching to be able to fit the needs of this demographic now. And so we expanded and we started really focusing on the secret sauce to helping people execute. So I joke about this all the time. People ask me, what do you do for a living? I don't say personal trainer. I don't say nutritionist. I say I'm a, I'm a time management specialist. That's what it all boils down to. That's how we ended up where we're at today. A few years back, wrote a book on the process uh, and science of really evaluation for metabolism that we later turned into a technology where we'll actually use a, an app as the metrics. So that way we can evaluate, okay, how is someone's body responding to this input? And based on that, an expert can evaluate and really come to to that coaching session equipped with the data they need to give them the right direction. We've had the privilege of working with 
folks in four or five countries right now, we ranging from top CEOs to celebrities to movie stars to pro athletes. But the majority of our clients are everyday normal people who are interested in cutting through the noise and just learning the truth about how their body responds. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we focus on. Before jumping into fairly comprehensive health techniques that everyone can implement to just improve their health immediately. I'd love to talk more about the entrepreneurship behind all of this. For an entrepreneur, obviously, there's a lot of ups and downs. I'd like to know a bit more about that journey, if there was like a greatest failure along the way or a greatest success, because you went from having storefronts to working with more people and then working with pro athletes. Talk a bit about what, what kind of not only physical tr transformations along the way, but the mindset transformations that you had to personally undergo to handle those leveling ups. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. Uh, it has always been a passion of mine to be able to work more directly, really be involved with clients. That's not an easy task to accomplish. We uh, instruct our clients, if you're going to be going on a trip, and you know you're going to be spending you know, a, a week in the city, we want to know the name of the hotel you're staying at and the dates that you're going to be there because we're going to do the research and tell you what the most convenient food options are. That restaurant, no, oh, by the way, the hotel you're staying at has only a partially equipped gym. So here's your programming for the next few days using the equipment that they have. You can take the guesswork out of it. That was not an easy sell to get from point A to point B. Uh, most people think of personal training as dollars for hours in the gym. Mm. And so breaking through that mindset and that psychology, um, ironically, we've seen it at even a higher success rate with our concierge coaching clients uh, than, than we have even the ones physically at the gym. And, and that boils down to priorities and time management to the point and question you are asking, uh, making that mindset switch really became more viable around the time that concierge doctors became popular. People were realizing that um, there was a niche for that. So the concept became a little bit more commonplace. So people crack up to this day. They're like, you know, I hired you for my nutrition or for my fitness program. Mm. Why are you asking my work hours or or how many kids I have or what time I go to bed at night? <laughs> Why are you sitting yeah. out front of my house now? <laughs> right. Why do you got the binoculars? No, I mean that that makes a huge, huge difference. I'll give you one one example. Are you a social leader? Do you take meals socially? Uh, that that's a huge that that's gonna completely change our strategy. Yeah. For someone who takes meals socially snacks are going to be our best friend. And this may surprise some, some people, but I'm actually going to position more of your carbohydrates mm. into your snacks because you don't take snacks socially. And it's easier to go to a restaurant and order if your strategy dictates some lean protein, vegetables, salad, things like that. You can get almost anywhere. Right. Whereas if I have a very specific list of these carbs or these foods, you can't do that when you're, you know, on a lunch date. That all plays into the strategy. So um, probably if I if I had a bone to pick with any approach, it would be the here, I know what you need to do before you've told me about yourself approach. In other words, here's a great meal plan, here's a great training program. You should do this without first getting to know that person and what their reality is. Until you know their lifestyle and their reality. You don't know what the best approach is going to be. You have to have all of those pieces. And that's where we've, over the course of quite a number of years, put time and effort into. But we've, we've arrived and with some incredible transformation stories. For sure. One of the things that I'm, <laughs> I'm getting from that entrepreneurially is not everybody who is a personal trainer or anyone in, in the health and wellness industry, not everybody is meant to be entrepreneurial about it. I've met multiple personal trainers who said they wanted to maybe sort of transition into training online as well. You can just tell that in reality, they really just want to go to work, get paid for the hours and then be done at the end of the day. They don't really want to, and there, there's nothing wrong with that, but just having, a there's self, nothing wrong with that, right? having the self-awareness to actually know, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm not super entrepreneurial. 
Uh, I want to transition into health. What do you? What would you say, Angelo, is the best approach to body transformation for the busy, proactive young professional? I'm sure you work with many people like this. But one of the biggest things for me, I'll just share, is I realized a couple years back that after I attained the physique I so badly longed for since I was like in ninth grade, a scrawny little kid with red hair, um, I finally get the physique, right? But I recognize it's all maintenance. It's all uphill. Even the maintenance becomes easier, yes, with the momentum, but mm -hmm. it, it, it is all maintenance. Do you tell that to new clients or do you not tell that to them that it's going to be maintenance? Because the mindset behind this for the science to work after it's implemented is to recognize that it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. You're, you're correct. Okay, so there, <laughs> there's a lot there. Here's what stuck out to me. People ask often, what is it going to take for me to get where I'm going and then be able to maintain it? I, I can't tell you the answer to that, and I'll stand behind this answer. The lifestyle has to become something that you actually enjoy, and it's a value that you have adopted. Until then, I actually was just doing a piece on this, the difference between goals and values. Classic example, I'm getting in shape for my wedding. So that's a great goal. And yeah. I'm all for goals. It's a great, but that, that eight week sprint of clean eating and exercise, what happens after the wedding? Unless you've actually adopted that goal as a value set and say, I now value clean eating, quality nutrition, regular exercise, the way it contributes to my happiness and my well-being in life. Until you've adopted that as a value, then you're still needing support, you still need the accountability, and you still need goals along the way to help you get there. But the ultimate goal is to really adopt it as part of your lifestyle. And if you're doing it the way that's most optimal for your lifestyle and fits well within your means, you'll get hooked. You'll yeah. start to actually enjoy it over time. And then it doesn't feel like work. That's the key. It goes back to the progress. Yeah. A specific question for your field. What would you suggest to an entrepreneur, a business owner, a very busy working professional who knows how to work out and therefore doesn't bother to consider training with a high level concierge service like MetPro, do you think that they are okay or would you recommend if they really want to take it up a notch, what would you say to that individual who they know they could improve, but like, oh, well, I know how to do my bodybuilding splits or what have you? What what we're we're looking for here is the question of specificity and if you have a passion for it. When I get somebody that calls me up and they they play for a pro sports team and you know they, they make millions of dollars on the field or on the court or whatever their circumstance, you know, they have a high level of motivation. Now when they're hiring me, they're not hiring me to teach them technique on their upright rows. Right. They're they're hiring me for the broad strategy. Here's what I can tell you, having evaluated quite a number of top, top athletic programs, it's not a matter of, well, you got to do, you know, this, this version of bicep curls is better than that version of bicep curls. No, what I'm looking at is I'm going to come back to an athlete and I'm going to say, okay, you have stated that your goals are X, Y, and Z. You want to improve your vertical leap. You want to improve whatever metrics you're looking for. Um, I see that you're training about 12 hours a week. And I can put about eight of these hours into this category of training, about two of these hours into this category of training, and another couple into that category. And what I'm seeing here is 80% of your time is going towards generalist fitness activities, and only 20% of your time is, is directly correlative to the objective that you've stated. What we need to do is we need to shift how you're allocating your time and become more of a specialist, un, not indefinitely, but until we check the box. Right. Hey, we've achieved this goal, this objective. Now we can shift back more towards the middle because extremes are bad. And what you want is to be balanced. But when you're trying to achieve objectives and you've already hit a level of mastery, you have to become a specialist. I like I it. can't. I'll, I'll get calls from executives and CEOs that are uh, that recognize that their health is a commodity. So they're already very fit. And what they'll tell me is, here's what I want. I, I, I'm already in good shape, but I, I want to run a sub six minute mile. I want to uh, I want to bench 250 yeah. uh, and I want to have under 10 percent body fat. Yeah. And they say, can you do that? 
My answer is, yeah, I can get you there. That's exactly what I do. Here's what you have to decide. Which do you want first? Mm Mm-hmm. Because if you try and train for all three, the odds of you accomplishing any of them is very low. But if we check one at a time off the list, you'll be able to sustain and achieve all the objectives that you have within reason, of course. Um, and that's where the specificity comes in and where the science comes in. Uh, and, and if you have a passion for it, uh, we have a passion for it, too. Listening allows you to multitask. Let's say you're driving to work, you're running errands, cleaning up on a Saturday, whatever you're doing, and that's why I've reached out to audible.com. I became an Audible affiliate so you can get a free audiobook. I use Audible for many of my audiobooks, tremendous selection of books readily available. So if you don't want to spend a monthly subscription to Audible, put in your name and email, at which point you can listen to that audiobook, keep it forever, and cancel your subscription before 30 days so that you don't get charged for the monthly subscription. This way you get a free book. Go to triplehaudiobook.com. That's H-H-H audiobook.com. Specificity at that point, you can work from there. Let's jump into metabolism now. How can, assuming you're comprehensively healthy, all of your tests are A+, you are physically in shape, you have no diseases, assuming you are pristinely healthy, what are some ways that we can, as proactive young professionals, business owners, facilitate a healthier metabolism throughout our work day? Great, great question. And so I think I can preface it with essentially what you said, but, you know, it's assuming you're a healthy person, there's no variables and outliers. What it comes down to is there's nothing fair about metabolism. Mm-hmm. That's really what it boils down to. Unfortunately, the truth is, I got a guy, he's become a good friend. I've been working with him for a long time. Um, he, he, he weighs about 290 pounds. Uh, he, tra- he does cardio an hour a day, six days a week, and he eats clean. And at best, he's thrilled if he can chop off a pound a week. Uh. He's thrilled if that happens. And that is unfortunate, but that's his current reality. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm on the phone with my, you know, 110 pound gal who's, you know, I I have her eating 3,200 calories a day. And if she so much as misses a snack, she'll wake up the next day a pound lighter. So where's the parody in that? There, there is no fair. The key is not about some magic pill or some magic bullet. Um, I, I don't believe in any of that because I've seen too much reality to know that that doesn't exist. What does exist is, how do we evaluate how your body is responding? Uh, and, and I'll never give you the wrong answer to that because it, I can't promise it's good news. Yeah. What I can promise is it's accurate news. So, you know, Johnny, you have eaten this, this many calories, this many grams of protein, carbs, and fats, this glycemic load, this breakdown throughout the day. You have done this training protocol and your body has responded this way. Now that's either going to be good news or it's going to be bad news or it's going to be somewhere in between. But what we have is accurate, quantifiable data that suggests a next logical step. That's the piece that we're missing. So I'll give you a peek behind the curtain if you want, and I'll I'll, I'll just share our, our, our initial process. Sure. It's all about a baseline testing, having a benchmark. That's how we're able to get such consistent, predictable, positive results. Some people can get them faster than others. Genetics absolutely play a role. Past diet history, training history absolutely plays a role. But if you have quality data, it's very hard not to be able to map out a path to progress. So the first thing we look at is body type and goal. We have to know what your real goal is, right? Not the... You have to be specific. Right. So don't, I I tell people don't judge yourself for your goal. Yeah. We have to know your body type because body type is, is really trendy now. A lot of people talk about, you know, train for your body type and that that's exactly what we do. We want to do, but look at your body type more as a sliding scale and expression of what your genetic predisposition is. And if you look at it in those terms, you'll see how that should influence right down to how you invest your time, what type of exercise you're doing, what 
type of nutritional strategy we're implementing, it's going to influence all of that. So we're looking at body type and goal. Then we're looking at lifestyle. I already gave you an example of somebody who has a, a busy schedule where they're traveling a lot. They eat socially uh, versus someone who kind of has a home base. Those are two very different strategies. Um, and then the next thing that I look to divine to determine is, is this person – a strategic or metabolic client. Uh, that That's critical. And so what that means is somebody who's strategic is somebody who their body will give them good results when they eat clean and they exercise regularly. The challenge is like most people fitting that lifestyle into their day-to-day -day routine. That's the challenge. So the science is all about taking balanced, quality recommendations, but actually the implementation of them. That's the whole trick. And if you can implement them well, that person's going to see progress. It doesn't need to be any extreme strategy. Right. Have you read The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson? I, I haven't. That sounds familiar, though. Well, you basically just defined The Slight Edge, which is essentially improving by give or take 1% each day so that over time you will see massive results in your life in every aspect of your life. What you just said is so important for people to grasp. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just take each step one after the other. That's it. And that that represents, I'm going to say, that represents 80% of the population are going to see the results from an efficient implementation of just one step at a time. But there's another subset, and that's the demographic of people that are like, Angelo, I'm already eating clean. I'm already watching my calories, managing my carbohydrates. I'm already exercising on yeah. a regular basis, and I still do not have the body or health that I want. And that's, that's not made up. That's a real challenge that a lot of people have. So right out of the gate, we're identifying which category someone falls into, and they fall into a metabolic category. That means that if you're already dieting, Eating even less isn't magically going to provide the result you're looking for. In that case, we have to achieve our objective by speeding up your metabolism. And so our approach to them is going to be different. We're going to achieve our objective by changing how their metabolism functions over time versus by cutting out bad habits. We're going to achieve our objective by changing how their metabolism functions over time versus by cutting out bad habits. Recognizing which category someone falls into is critical. That's, that's three out of the five things that we look at. The fourth surprises the most people, and that is baseline testing. Yeah. This has is, is been an evolution. We've refined this process over many years now. Where if somebody starts with us, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, eat this meal plan. They're going to say, why? I'm going to say, because I have had thousands of people eat this meal plan. And so I know exactly based on your age, activity level, demographic, circumstance, et cetera, what averages I should expect. Yeah. They say, is this what I'm supposed to eat? My answer is, I have no idea. That's what this is going to teach me. Based on how you respond, then I'm going to know how you're supposed to eat. So we put someone on a benchmark meal plan temporarily to see, okay, does this person gain weight at this intake level? Does this person lose weight at this intake level? Does this person have more energy, less energy, hungry, satiated, et cetera, et cetera, and down the line? Based on the, those analytics, then now I can go back and actually have relevant feedback and say, all right, Johnny, um, based on the fact that you know I had you on 1,900 calories and this many grams of carbohydrates and you weren't doing a lot of activity this week and here is your result, I need to change this up and we have to take a little different approach. Here's what we're going to try. And that's how we constantly reassess, reevaluate and adapt so that way we're always moving forward. Sometimes what we learn is that somebody asks, well, I, I want to lose 10 pounds. And I have to tell them you can't lose 10 pounds in your current metabolic state. Mm. I mean, any anyone could starve themselves and gimmick it off, but we all know that work. Won't last. 
not going to last, right? But if you are already at what would be considered a lower intake level, or you've already adjusted and optimized your calorie intake, your carbohydrate intake, your exercise, like, well, what if I exercise more? Well, you're already exercising 45 minutes a day, and you have a full-time job, a mortgage, three kids, and 45 minutes a day isn't going to cut it. Like, well, what do I do? Well, here's what I here's what we're going to do. I'm going to retrain your metabolism. How do you do that? Well, it's because the metabolism acclimates over time to your nutritional lifestyle. The metabolism acclimates over time to your nutritional lifestyle. Mm. So if you eat more, your metabolism has to speed up. If you eat less, your metabolism has to slow down. That happens with everyone. If you're a human being, if you're a living, breathing animal, that happens. Your genetics influence how quickly that happens. Your body type influences what degree to which that happens. But it happens for everyone because our bodies cannot exist in a perpetual state of changing mass. In other words, you can't just lose and lose and lose weight or gain and gain and gain weight. Can you talk to us yeah. about what you mean by eating more? Because some people just started drooling and decided to order a second sandwich. And then the other people, they know what you meant in terms of increasing frequency. Yes. No, you, you hit the nail on the head. I'm going there. Some people at the drive through All right, give me a second one there, buddy. <laughs> don't, 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 don't say, yeah, well, uh, Angelo take- said, if I, I got to eat more. Really what it is, is I'd like, instead of looking at food differently, look at your metabolism and its function huh. differently. Okay. So let, let me give you let me give you an illustration. When you think of someone with a fast metabolism, what what are you thinking of? Skinny. There you go. <laughs> right. You because usually, you know, they can eat and eat. A lot of people say, well, I, you know, that athletic person, or they look at the cover of the magazine, they go, well, look at this athlete here on the cover, and they have a really fast metabolism. And they're and they're right. But I want to challenge you a little. Think differently. Have you ever seen those shows like the Discovery Health Channel, where they got the, you know, 900 pound man they got to take out of his house with the crane and the the whole. (laughs) It's not funny, but I'm trying because I just got an image because I I just, yeah. So like from fat to fit, that kind of thing. That kind of thing. We've all heard of these extreme cases. Now this, you know, this is a sobering thought. I mean, this is a sad situation that some of these people find their health in. Yeah. But just the, the scientific lesson that we can learn. So when they examine what these people are eating. It, it's massive. It's it's massive quantities. Now, when this person goes on a, a diet of 4,500 calories a day, it's not unusual for these people to, to see, you know, five, 10 pounds overnight lop off. Um, I don't know about you, but if I ate 4,500 calories tomorrow, I would not be five pounds lighter the next day. Um, so what that indicates is that even though they are, in this case, morbidly obese, um, their metabolism has been attempting to upregulate, to stop the gain. It's been trying to recreate homeostasis and so has been speeding up in step with eating more but couldn't quite keep up with it, which is why they're gaining weight. But that's why people who are generally – eating, unfortunately, worse, find that when they make a weight loss attempt, their initial result is quicker versus someone who's already eating, quote unquote, good, because their body, their metabolism has already acclimated to, quote unquote, Uh. good. So separate health and metabolism. I, I, they should be related, but they are really two different topics. We can talk all day about nourishing your body, fighting disease, getting the nutrients you need, but that's really a separate topic. What I'm talking about here is how your body, how the carburetor in your biology adjusts up and down to manage energy in and energy out to try and keep you in a homeostasis. I can give you absolute proof. Every time I do a seminar, I'll pick a gal out of the front row that looks like she's in good shape. I'll say, okay, Julie here, uh, how much do you weigh, Julie? She goes, okay, I, I weigh you know, 125 pounds. I say, perfect. You know your body pretty well. What would happen if you changed nothing about your diet, 
except you added a pint of haagen ice cream every night before you go to bed. Well, she laughs and she goes, well, I'd, I'd be happy with that. That sounds great. <laughs> uh, but she goes, I, I, I'd probably gain weight. I said, perfect. Now tell me, how much weight would you gain in a month? And invariably, this gal will tell me, oh, I'd probably you know, gain about five, six pounds in a month. Perfect. How much weight would you gain if you just kept doing that every night for a year? Uh-huh. How much weight would you gain? And she'll say, I'd, I'd probably gain 15, 20 pounds. Yeah. And then I tell her, you know, you are the expert on your body. But coming from someone else, I'm an expert on this because this is what I've invested my entire life into. I can tell you, you're right. That's about what you're going to gain. You're going to gain 15, 20 pounds in a year. Now let's do some quick math. A thousand calories a night, that's 7,000 calories a week. If there's 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, that's two pounds a week. There's 52 weeks in a year, that's 104 pounds. Anyone in this room think Julie here is going to gain 104 pounds in one year? Not a single taker. Here's what that means. That means that that pint of ice cream every night sped Julie's metabolism up. That's the only thing that can mean. Mm. Now stop, please. Don't say, oh, I, Angela told me I need to eat ice cream to speed my metabolism. That's not uh, the take-home per, per, message yeah, per, Personally, I'm just this, this debating between Ben and Jerry's and haagen <laughs> 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 See, I knew instantly you and I were going to get along great. Oh, real. <sighs> That's awesome. So, But the mechanic that takes place is it's when you eat more, your metabolic rate. So in in Julie's case, if she ate that ice cream every night, she's going to gain body fat. She's not going to be happy with the result. But she would not gain it to the extent that the numbers would dictate. So that means that you can control your metabolism. You can force it to speed up. You can force it to slow down. If you were to take 100 people put them on a stranded island with rations, 1,500 calories a day. It doesn't matter the number, 1,500 calories a day. A year later, everyone would come out with the same approximate metabolic rate. They would be rescued, they'd get off the island, and they would all be burning 1,500 calories a day. If not, they don't get off the island. They would have died. So you have large people, you have small people, you have elderly people, you have children. They're all eating 1,500 calories a day. Either your metabolism is able to acclimate to that, despite whether you gain or lose weight, either it can acclimate to it and you keep living, or it can't acclimate to it and you waste away and die. And so assuming that you keep living, that means your new metabolic rate is set by your nutritional circumstance within reason. You obviously can't survive on eating very, very few. And obviously, if you ate an excessive amount, your metabolism will never catch up. But it can and does adjust more than most people realize. That comes back to that client I was telling you about. It comes back to understanding how to truly transform, how to change your metabolism. So that client that I had to give bad news to, you can't lose 10 pounds. I'm looking at what you're eating. I'm looking at how you're exercising. There's nothing more you can do here. Here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow, you're going to have an extra half an apple. You're going to have um, uh, two extra slices of sweet potato and a couple more ounces of chicken or fish. Uh, and you're going to get on the cardio machine and you're going to give me an extra 30 minutes. So they come back the next day and I say, all right, Johnny. What I want you to do is gain a pound. So the next day, we're going to add even a little bit more. And the next day, we're going to add even a little bit more until you gain a pound. Like, what are you doing to me? I'm trying to go the opposite direction. I'm trying to lose weight. Follow me through this. Follow me through this. So Johnny comes back to me three, four days later, and he's like, all right, I gained a pound. Perfect. Now, don't add any more. Keep eating what you're eating, but I want you to go burn that pound off. Now you can't go exercise 10 pounds off next week. Not going to happen, but you can go and you can exercise off one pound. 
and keep exercising until we get it. When you've lost just one pound, come back to me. So two or three days later, he comes back huffing and puffing. I hate you, Angelo. Okay. <sighs> Whew. I did it. I lost that pound. Now what? Go gain it back. We're going to add just a little bit more, just a tight, you know, an extra 100 calories a day, 150 calories a day, quality foods until you gain it back. I'm going to make him repeat that process of gaining and losing the same one to two pounds over and over again while he eats gradually more and more fueling energy for a little more and more exercise until we're back at a point where his metabolic rate is healthy enough again to where I can say, now we can lose that 10 pounds. Why? Because now I have something to change, a lever to pull. I can cut calories or I can cut carbohydrates or I can adjust your meal timing, glycemic load, et cetera, whatever needs to in order to affect change. And it all boils down to here's the big secret. Here's what nobody wants to tell you. Weight loss is not about what you eat per se. It's about contrast. The difference between what you're used to, good or bad, and the difference between what you then change it to. Every year, I'll put some of my athletes on stage at physique competitions. I've been doing this for years and years. Someone will come up to me and say, oh, your figure model, she looks amazing. Your bodybuilder uh, or physique competitor, he looks amazing. What do you have him eating? And I give the same you know, tongue-in-cheek answer. I say, you know, the usual boiled chicken and broccoli, you know, et cetera. Like, wow, if I eat that, would I look like them? Nope, mm. you wouldn't. <laughs> and here's why. Because it's not the boiled chicken and broccoli. Now, don't get me wrong. That all helps. But it's the fact that for the last six months, that guy up there that's sitting up there at about uh, under 5% body fat and just shredded, mm. he's been in the gym. I've been pushing gradually more and more and more fuel through him to where he was eating, you know, 3,500, 4,000 calories a day. Now, just leading up to the show, I put him on, you know, 1,900 calories of boiled chicken and broccoli. Mm. That contrast forced him to just incinerate the fat off of his body. Uh. It's the contrast. So I'll say to someone, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, I want you to eat an apple. Will that make me lose weight? Nope. I want you to eat the apple anyway. Why? Because in about eight weeks, I'm going to rearrange your diet. And when I take that apple out, I'm going to get a predictable result. As long as you're used to eating that apple, I now have a lever. Now, that's a very, very small example, but it holds true in principle. If I can put a day-to-day -day habitual structure in place where your body is used to this, then I have the leverage to change it. And that's why the metabolism is the linchpin. The metabolism is the key. You're going to, now you're going to laugh at this. I had a gal that hired me because she was going on one of the uh, reality TV shows that features extended periods of time of minimal eating on an island. <laughs> And she was afraid that she would get too hungry, hangry, <laughs> because her metabolism was really fast and she couldn't go more than a couple hours without eating uh, and she'd get a headache. So we actually did it in reverse and we gradually over time got her used to eating less and less frequently, bigger meals less frequently, and then eventually started pulling meals out. And we did it in such a way that we lost the least amount of weight possible, but got her metabolism acclimated to that. And sure enough, when she went on the show, she did very good and a lot of her her uh, teammates struggled a bit. Uh, so your metabolism really will acclimate to what you train it to. So make sure you're training it to do the right thing. Mm, there's a lot to unpack with what you just <laughs> with what you just shared. I love it though because it's scientific and it's it holds true and it's it's the way to actually approach this effectively. So is there a way to kind of say all of what you just said in like a nutshell? So for the female listening who's had this extra 20 pounds and really struggles to get that off or the guy listening who really wants to gain an extra 10 pounds of muscle but has struggled for the last three years trying to implement the last workout he saw on bodybuilding.com 
Is there a succinct way of encouraging them to keep going and find a more, you know what I mean? Yes. Don't give up. You can accomplish it with the right science. It's simply a matter of knowing, understanding where your body is at. Everybody asks me, how come, you know, because some of my clients will talk, they're like, how come each of our programs are so different? Well, it's because everybody's personal body is responding differently. There's four simple levers. There's calories, there's carbohydrates, there's meal timing, and there's exercise. Not all the same levers have the same relevancy to everyone. Some people have already utilized the lever. The key is if you can strategically evaluate where your body is actually at, baseline, where your body is actually at, then a direct path to accomplishing what you want to accomplish can be seen. You can discover it. You, you mentioned the word baseline again. I'd like to get your thoughts on getting, let's say you have a client. Do you get them back to neutral through that metabolism leveraging or baseline, should I say, before implementing a, a, a meal plan or workout plan for them? Um, That's a great question. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. In other words, do we always upregulate your metabolism before doing a cutting phase? And, and the answer is it, it depends on how much leverage we have. We're going to diet somebody in a progression. Don't think of it in terms of one meal plan. Think of it in terms of, okay, we're going to do a this strategy or that strategy. And, and, and we're very much diet agnostic. Some people prefer more plant-based. Some people are a little bit more carnivorous. Yeah. Whatever your personal preference Gotta is. Gotta have the barbecue. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'm the same way. But whatever your personal preference is, th the same principles still apply in evaluate and adjust. If we have somebody starting the process and we've evaluated that, you know, okay, and, and this is a very common thing that happens. So I'll talk with a client regularly and say, here's what I'm seeing. Based on your baseline testing results, I'm going to tell you something that you already knew, and that's why you called me in the first place. Your metabolism is slow. Uh, it's not great news, but it's not broken. Um, so here's what's going to happen. You want to lose 30 pounds. Based on the analytics that I'm seeing, I'm going to have to drop you a couple phases on your intake, but I believe that I can get a portion of that weight off of you first. So what I'm going to recommend is we're going to try and lose of that 30 pounds. We're going to try and lose between 12 and 14 of those pounds, and then we're going to upregulate your metabolism. So Maybe I don't have a lot of leverage, but I have enough to where we can start the process. I'll let the person know well in advance what I'm predicting will happen. And I'll say, okay, we're going to lose 10, 12 pounds. And then you're just, you're going to get to a point where I don't have enough leverage to make the rest happen. So we're going to pause, upregulate your metabolism, focus on performance, sculpting, muscle, tone, and eating more. And then we're going to go for round two and get the rest of the weight. That's, that's how it can be done. And, and oh, by the way, for years, it's been very popular to have entertainment around the weight loss industry. So we watch like the shows on TV where people are trying to lose 100 plus pounds, 200 plus pounds. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I actually know a number of the trainers on these shows. And a lot of these are great people and have done a ton of good. Here is the asterisk. You don't lose 100 pounds in one shot. You shouldn't do it that way. If you did it that way, uh, you probably did it wrong. And, and, and here's why. Your metabolism is going to acclimate. So the way it needs to happen, if you have a large amount of weight to lose, what we're going to do is we're going to increase your activity level. We're going to decrease your intake. You're going to lose part of that weight. You're going to lose 25, 30 pounds. And then we're going to stop. We're going to take a break. We're going to let your metabolism refresh for a few weeks. And then we're going to go for round two and then round three. And depending on how much weight you have to lose, there may be a few more. We have to do this in mm. periodization cycles, just like athletes train. Makes good the TV problem, though. Yeah. You beat me to the punch. Uh, with, when you do that, it makes for terrible TV because it's boring if it's not you know, the drama going straight through. So just understanding, once you understand how your metabolism works, it makes it so much easier to map that path forward. And having somebody that can explain each step and really lay those breadcrumbs out, that's the key. If you have somebody that you can count on for that, it really does make a big difference. An approach of consistency and specificity. I love that because 
so many people, even people and myself included, I could see falling into a category of listenership to even this interview saying, oh, well, how am I going to hack this? What am I going to implement to make myself lose that 10 pounds? It's not the right way of thinking about it. You have to get rid of thinking about hacks or, um, you know, oh, what's that? My question would be, what are the baselines to health to make sure your plan will actually work? In other words, do you make sure these people are sleeping full seven, eight hours a night? Do you make sure that they are drinking enough water? Do you make sure all that, that actually, if they aren't doing and they try to implement your plan, would it sabotage it? What are some of those baselines? Yeah, if, if you're not doing those things, it doesn't matter what plan you're doing. It's going to sabotage any plan. Right. Um, you don't get enough sleep. Uh, you, your hormones are impacted by that. Your recovery is impacted. It just makes set everything suboptimal, huge factors. You'd be surprised. Most people pressure uh, the coaches to be more restrictive, not less. You'd think a lot of like, well, I don't want to eat less. No, most people want to feel like, oh, I want to, you know, they kind of trained by the weight loss industry mentality, which really is not the way to go. And that is that kind of binge cycle dieting. We need to have a sustainable approach. That doesn't mean there isn't time periods of being more aggressive. But if we aren't checking the important boxes like your sleep, your hormones, quality nutrition. So we, we've talked about the energetic pathways and how to balance the metabolism. But now the vitality and the nutrient side is just as important. It's just that'll be for another podcast. <laughs> right. Um, but, but all those pieces really should come together and need to be accounted for. Uh, so that way you can get the best possible result. Huge question. Why is it important for an entrepreneur, a proactive young professional, or any professional to master their physical health if they naturally have a rocket metabolism, maybe they're 34, they have kids, they have a family, they skip meals because they're so focused, they work so hard, they don't have an issue with gaining weight, they feel like their energy is pretty low though. Why? What would you say to that guy who or woman who can house extra large soda, fast food, take out on the way home just to get a meal in and he's not gaining weight or she's not gaining weight? In fact, maybe they're losing weight. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people do this and then obviously inevitably they're going to end up either burning out or getting type two diabetes. So what would you share with those people who are so focused and so driven who were blessed with a nice metabolism? But is that going to catch up with them? Yes. So I, I mean, we could, we could dive into the whole, I mean, I, I've worked with countless, you know, retired NFL players who got used to a certain eating strategy and have found that it was a little harder to break it in retirement. And so that, uh, and you know, it's going to change. I was that guy. I could eat anything I could, and, and I could stay lean and it changes, but I want to actually go a different route yeah. instead of focusing on that. You may be good today because you're genetically blessed, or maybe you have a fast metabolism and you can get away with it, but you're not realizing your potential. And oh, by the way, I don't just mean your potential with how your abs look. You're not realizing your potential in productivity. Yeah. You're not realizing your potential in health or in any aspect of your life if you're suboptimal here. And it's the easiest low hanging fruit to optimize. Um, if you're critically evaluating all the things in life that you have on your plate, a few simple changes uh, can be a huge return on investment. Uh, make it and see how much of an impact it will have, uh, even if you do have a healthy body and fast metabolism. Huge impact. Want to jump into the heart healthy hustle round? I'm going to ask you a series of rapid fire questions. The first category is heart. What activity do you use to care for and strengthen your internal character? Meditation. And I like to, um, I like to actually do a lot of my creative thinking and meditation time while I'm doing low intensity exercise. So as part of my personal routine, I have periods of low intensity activity. And those are the times that I find that I often will feel the most creative um, and make progress on some of the biggest challenges that I'm facing internally. How do you maintain your physical health and avoid burnout? Preparation. 
an mm-hmm. ounce of an ounce of preparation. It, 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 that's that's the key. So if you prepare in advance, it becomes easier. So one of the the first things I recommend anybody new, if you had to just go home and implement one strategy, prep a go bag of clean foods that are low perishable, things that aren't going to spoil if they are left in your glove box for a week. Having something just as simple as that available can make a huge difference on the day-to-day sustainability of what you're trying to accomplish. Preparation, so you don't have to be superhuman. (laughs) That's it. Hustle, what's your main motivation for doing what you do? The creative side. I love answering questions that I feel have not been fully explored. This is an area people would have asked me, you're going to be a weight loss specialist. I don't think of myself as a weight loss specialist. That was not the industry that I was interested in getting into. I am passionately intrigued, fascinated, almost obsessed with transformation, the ability um, to transform physically health and aesthetics of the human body and how it acclimates and adapts. And that's what has led me on the path that, that I've taken. Powerful. Angelo, in conclusion of the show, I'm going to ask you the park bench paradigm question. If you were walking in a park, you see your younger self, maybe your younger 20 something going through a hard transitional period, you're restless, ambitious, and you're not sure what's going to happen next. If you could sit down next to your younger self, put your arm around your own shoulder, what would you tell him and why? I would tell him, you're going to learn a lot more than you know now. Time changes everything. The person you are today will not be the person you are tomorrow. Um, And enjoy the ride. Angela, how can the audience connect with you after the show? We have a special offer for your folks. Go to metpro.co. That's metpro.co. And then forward slash heart, they'll get a, they can have a free consultation. And I would encourage if you take us up on that, actually talk with the expert on the other side of the phone, actually open up because then you're going to have a meaningful conversation, whether or not our program is the right fit for you or not, you're going to be able to have good takeaways from that. So take advantage of that. Go to metpro.co forward slash heart. We'll take good care of you. Angelo, thank you so much for being on the show today. I learned a lot and I know the audience did as well. I appreciate your time. It's been great, Jonathan. Thank you. Guys, be sure to go to medpro.co forward slash heart to get your complimentary consultation. Congratulations on making it to the end of this episode. What about this episode stood out to you? Next, I need your help sharing this show. I want this podcast to impact and reach 6,000 people per episode by August 31st, 2019. And I want us to reach 15,000 people per month by March 29th, 2020. Have you been enjoying multiple episodes of the Heart Healthy Hustle? I'm thrilled to share with you an exclusive invitation to join our new Facebook community. To get to know other Heart Healthy Hustlers, simply go to thehearthealthyhustle.com forward slash Facebook, where you can expect to see different members of our community being featured weekly in Facebook Live calls. I appreciate all of your love and support, and I will see you in the next episode. As always, be generous on every occasion. There is a story for you, and live wide open. Yeah.